Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Delusional's Arcade. So we're at the Expo here in Long Island. It's at the Cradle of Aviation Museum, but it's the Long Island Retro Gaming Expo. I'm here with George. He's partly responsible for getting this working. Um, he got the monitor, you said from eBay, we'll go through that. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump right into the episode. Okay, George, so walk us through this thing and how you got it to work. Sure thing. Uh, so when I first encountered this machine, there were quite a number of problems. So the first thing was the uh, power supply had completely blown, so there was really no hope of saving that. Um, probably the biggest problem was actually this monitor. So so the, um, the original tube looked fine, but the circuit board was shattered, like literally shattered in about 12 or 13 pieces, and there was really no chance of fixing that. And uh, when I looked at the logic board, I could tell that there were some visibly bad capacitors, so I knew I was going to need to do that. Right. So the way I approached this was um, I started by switching out the power supply with a modern uh, switching power supply. Um, at first, I didn't have a monitor, so what I did was I took the audio and video outputs from this, and I just made an adapter to turn those into composite cables. Right, right. And I just fed it into a television because I know that this machine outputs composite video. And then from there, um, I was able to see and hear computer mm -hmm. space for the first time. And so I knew that the logic board was mostly sound. Um, from there, I just switched out all the caps on the logic board. And then I started trying to find a replacement monitor. And um, I, uh, I kind of had some good luck here. I found. I was say you got super lucky because those are like unobtainium, like they say. Right? Yeah, exactly. They're really hard to find. So, so first, I found like a TV serviceman's kind of guidebook from the early 70s. And it had a kind of a list of televisions that had the same chassis as oh, computer smart. space. So it's it's an adventure okay. too, and I found, I don't know, like 10 or 15 televisions with the same chassis. And then I just started searching those names on eBay, and just by sheer luck, right. I found one that was in working condition in Albany, New York, which is about three hours from where we're located. So I picked that up for $75. It was a great price. That's great. Yeah, because uh, again, they're super hard to find. And right. just as advertised, it was in working condition. So originally, the plan was actually just to take that monitor and put it in here and forget about the original. But when we took this out, on the top of the monitor, someone had written computer space TV on it. And it was really funny. Seeing that just kind of changed everything for us. We were like, right. no, no, no. We're, we're going to keep this monitor and we're going to swap boards. And I had actually seen someone else do that in the past, uh, Ed Fries, who, um, who posted his repair of computer space online. And so it was a very good guide for what I did. Right. So then I ended up taking the two televisions out, removing the PCB, swapping them out. And thankfully, we got this TV going and we had computer space for the first time. Um, great. Otherwise, it was just some minor stuff like cable management and uh, power. And, and what about the control panel? I was fortunate. So, so the control panel was actually in really great shape. I had to um, replace a spring or two and right. just kind of give it a general cleaning. But Let me actually take this off here just to get a better angle here. Yeah, so, so all of this is original. Um, I just had to replace one spring, and you can kind of see here I had to epoxy a button. It would oh, I didn't even in, notice. Yeah, it, you didn't tell me, I would never have known. Yeah, so it was broken in half, and then we just kind of epoxied it and sanded it back to get it okay. polished again. But other than that, it's... This a, is all here. It wasn't rubbed off or anything. No, right? this Are is all lucky? original. Yeah. They're really hard to press, and we were playing, we were like, oh, I'm yeah, to fire it. You it's know? pretty, yeah, it requires a decent amount of force to but get this going. the thing is, it's not like you have to mash it, because I think when it goes to the end of the screen is when you can shoot again, right? Exactly. It's not like you gotta... Yeah, it's not like you have rapid fire on this game. That's what game. makes it hard. It's yeah. When you miss. Yeah, when you miss, dead. you've got to wait a couple seconds to try again. Right, right. Exactly. It's um, really cool. So this is one of the red ones. I know um, my buddy John from John's Arcade has the yellow one, which is more rare. Yeah, those are quite rare, in and fact. And the double one, too, right? The yeah, two the two players are rare yeah. because they were at the end of the production right. life, and uh, there were very few of those. Oh, I'd okay. say red and blue are the, and maybe green, I think, are the most common variants of this. Right. The serial of this one indicates that this is like early to mid-life okay. for, the, for the production run. I noticed it has little scratches, but this is all fiberglass, right? It's so all it's fiberglass, hard. yeah. The only really Six. nasty one is here, but otherwise it's in good it's shape. Nice and shape. We took some car wax and polished it up, giving oh, really? it a nice that good works. shine. Yeah, yeah and you if, can take pledge, like for my Nintendo cab or whatever. Yeah, that works. That's awesome. And then if you, uh, I don't know if you want to go around back, but I have the back door open so you can see the logic board and the transplanted. Yeah, let's go ahead. Why don't we, um, we'll pause, we'll get it situated, and we'll resume again. Sounds great. Yeah. All right, so now we've got the back of the cabinet open, and you can kind of see all the things that I did here to get this machine running. 
So here's the uh, modern switching power supply that I use, a half. Yeah. And so I, I took the original one out. It was running, I mean, it was blown up. There was really no point in even trying to save it. Um, this is the logic board, and you can see the new caps that I put onto okay. it. Um, I love this board because, I mean, this is before CPUs really, I mean, CPUs existed, but they were prohibitively expensive. Right. So um, what Nolan Bushnell did was he used TTL Logic to yep. create this game. And you can see here, these are the sprites of the game all shown in diodes. That's and so awesome. that's a really unique feature to this particular game. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, to even dream this up was like nuts. Yeah, it's a really remarkable story about how this thing got created. Yeah. Um, so I see you have a Lapai amp. <laughs> I recognize like the uh, yeah. the knobs and stuff. This but... was a quick purchase. It was like I I didn't I was getting audio out of the television, but it was really weak, and I didn't have time before the show to get replacement vacuum oh, tubes. Oh, I see. Yep. And so I just grabbed an audio amplifier, and and that was all I needed to get sound. Right. So for long term, I guess we'll you'll address it, but for now. Yeah, exactly. It works. For the for the purpose of the show, it was fine. And uh, yeah, the original coin counters here, it works just That's fine. Cool. That's so the original. How many uh, does it have on there? Twenty-seven. 1,332. So we'll put the math on the screen. We're not going to rack our brains now, but this is how much it equals in quarters. Yeah. <laughs> nice. That's right. <laughs> and here you can see the transplanted board. And uh, it might be hard to tell on camera, but those vacuum tubes are lit up. Yeah, and, I'll, I'll uh, dim it. You can see it. Perfect. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Now you can see them. And so, yeah, this is what came out of that donor television. And you can see some of my handiwork here. These are all the different lines that I uh, wow. disconnected and reconnected. And um, and then, yeah, you can see down here, this is the coin mechanism and the controls. And uh, there, that's the coin catch. And what's really funny about that is that it's just a paint can that they cut a hole into and just placed right there. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, so, and yeah. You this can is, see it's fiberglass. Yeah, the know, entire, yeah, the entire cabinet's fiberglass with the exception of the back. And right. Yeah, otherwise, I mean, it's in really great shape now. OK, everybody, that about does it for this episode. Thanks again, George, for doing this for us. Like Absolutely. we said, just put a smile on people's faces all day. The fact that you got it working is just amazing. Yeah, um, thank you. So another one in arcade history. Uh, again, guys, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like button below. That really helps me out. And I do have the apparel, Delusional's Arcade t-shirts. Just click on the link below. You can do that. I'm also on Twitter, at Dell's Arcade. And on Instagram, you can see the links below as well. And thanks again. So I guess we'll see you next time. Yeah, take care. Take care.